distinguished ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or self-advocates, permit me this morning to recognize Mrs. Sharon Clark Rowley, Senator the Honorable Mr. Paul Richards, High Commissioner to Canada, or feature speaker Ms. Monica, and members of the media. It's really a pleasure for me to be here once again to join the Down Syndrome Family Network for another year of celebration, another year of awareness, another year of observation. As we recognize the 11th commemoration of World Down Syndrome Day with the Down Syndrome Family Network, I'm honored to have once again been invited to participate. I must admit that it's a pleasure to be here at this event and more importantly, to be here with all of you. I must also thank the organizers for their fortitude and the perseverance for still going strong after 11 years. Such is your drive and commitment to this noble cause. And permit me just to recognize Mr. Niles. When I saw your son walking up this morning, I felt a particular sense of private confidence in which he approached this podium. Because me, after almost eight years as a politician, a parliamentarian, every time I get up to speak, <laughs> I tremble. So well done, congratulations, and all the self-advocates who spoke so far, well done. I'm extremely proud of all of you. This year's observance comes on the heels of International Women's Day and yesterday's observance of the International Day of Happiness. We must all agree that Trinidad and Tobago has much to appreciate and value as we simultaneously address the needs of our society, particularly those with special interest groups. The theme, with us, not for us, illustrates a sentiment that runs deep. As Minister with Responsibility for Gender and Child Affairs, I want to assure that government is committed to a truly inclusive Trinidad and Tobago for persons with a disability driven by their insights and experience. And while Mr. Niles spoke this morning, it caused me to reflect. I heard the call and the plea for legislation, and yes, that is necessary. But I often say when I speak in the parliament that you cannot legislate people into good behavior. Yes, there's a place and a need for legislation, but there's a greater call for all of us as individuals to strive to do better and be better. And at the core of that should be the ability for us to respect each and every individual and citizen as a valuable human being. So beyond the call for legislation, there must be a call for all citizens in Trinidad and Tobago to really respect and value each other as individuals, regardless of our unique abilities. We have to bring that call for us to be good, decent citizens. That is so important to me. Today is a special day. I'm not asking you to ignore your challenges and the mountains you sometimes have to climb. But let today be one where we are able to recognize that alongside all the challenges, there are surmountable opportunities. Many of you here today, if not all of you, can understand the struggles you had to conquer to be the best that you are today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to lie to you, we still have a lot of work to do in Trinidad and Tobago. As policymakers, as legislators, we have a lot of work to do, but I strongly believe in the potential of Trinidad and Tobago to be a great place. And I strongly believe in the potential of all of us as citizens to do right by each other and to really transform the space that we call our own and that we call home. I, as I look and reflect on my life as a politician, I look towards the future, it would be my greatest joy and privilege to see that as we implement policies, as we craft laws, that the people of Trinidad and Tobago, despite the policies, despite the laws, make a conscious decision to ensure that this place lives up to its fullest potential for every single citizen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, at the Gender and Child Affairs Division, we are implementing the National Child Policy, which recognizes children's rights as fundamental human rights and highlights the need to ensure that children are loved, valued, nurtured, protected, empowered, and supported. 
the National Policy on Gender and Development recognizes the importance of socialization with youth, this being a period that embeds values, attitudes, and behaviors for social norms. It also seeks to optimize the functionality of persons with a disability as it explores gender-specific experiences and needs related to challenges caused by disability, for example, in the areas of education, security, social adjustment, and employment. Some time ago, the division had the opportunity to have advocate Ms. Chrissy Susuza as part of our staff. Chrissy, was, when she was with us, she was a very valuable member of the OPM team, and we are forever grateful for what we learned from Chrissy and for all the opportunities Chrissy gave us to change as an organization and to grow as an organization. By learning new ways of working and allowing access, we can establish best practices so that persons with Down syndrome can reach their full potential. Persons with disabilities have the right to be loved, educated, and protected like everyone else. The division not only seeks the interests of the vulnerable, but continues to participate in sensitization and capacity building opportunities. For instance, the 2021 UN Partnership on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities allowed us to link the policy to the training received at the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Exercises and conferences such as this one allow us to be better equipped in our own collaborative efforts. We continue to support the work of NGOs providing grants on a case-by-case -case basis, for example, assisting those that are deaf and hearing impaired or otherwise physically challenged, and our national domestic violence shelter are equipped to facilitate persons with disabilities. In adapting our initiatives, we need the private and public sectors geared towards inclusivity. We can't just talk inclusivity. We have to put it into action. We have to make sure it's part of our everyday lives. We have to wholeheartedly adopt the concept of inclusivity. For International Women's Day, global leaders and technical officers sought to embrace equity by addressing access in all sectors. I urge you to harness technology to explore new ways of doing things and create more inclusive spaces. Sign language, closed captioning, automated voice control and recognition for typing and translation services, as well as assistive devices, can open doors that have been closed for far too long. As I close, let us raise our standards together and see persons for their abilities. It is so important for us to see persons for their abilities. And I want to share a personal experience as a mother. I have three children. Three children growing up in the same household with their mother and father, but three children with three unique personalities and three unique sets of skills and abilities. My firstborn, is an excellent artist. My second board is the athlete of the family. My youngest, my son, my baby, my darling. Despite his learning disability, he is an avid musician. He plays the piano. He is in tune with everything that is going around the world. He absorbs news and current affairs, and he is the one to often tell me what is happening around the world and how I should respond to it. Three children in the same household, each unique in their own way. We have to really value each individual for what they bring to the table. Ladies and gentlemen, the call with us, not for us, is indeed powerful. And I hope that after today's activities, that collectively, that we would all work not only to ensure that those persons with Down syndromes have all the opportunities that are available in Trinidad and Tobago, that we create a space, as I said at the beginning, where each and every citizen is valued, respected, and protected, and collectively,
we create a better Trinidadan and Tobago for all. I thank you.